Welcome to Behold Bible Study. This is the uh, Bible study for January 17th, the Baptism of Our Lord uh, Sunday. Actually, these texts uh, are a little out of sequence in that um, last Sunday liturgically in, many, uh, in most churches was Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, but we postponed it one week because um, we actually have a baptism a family com coming in that will be part of our recorded worship for this coming Sunday the 17th. So, hence, th this is uh, the text, Mark 1, 4 through 11. Uh, if you remember, actually, so this is John the Baptist uh, baptizing Jesus. This was the exact same text that was used just six weeks ago in the season of Advent, the second Sunday of Advent. Um, and whereas in Advent, we focused on John in uh, Epiphany, we'll be focusing more on Jesus in our worship, obviously, and his baptism. So I invite you to take out your uh, Bibles and read along Mark 1, 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. So note in Mark again, like uh, in comparison to other synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, or Matthew Luke, and John, uh, Mark is very brief and condensed. It's the only Gospel that begins with the phrase um, and calls itself a Gospel. Um, this is the Gospel of Mark, and uh, there's no recording in Mark's Gospel of any birth narrative of Jesus. It simply jumps to what it assumes and presumes is the good news of Jesus Christ, and it's his baptism, and his ministry launches right there with Jesus' baptism. So, Mark, we have a baptism of sorts, but notice we actually have two kinds of baptisms. We have John's baptism, and we have Jesus' baptism. In this narrative, we hear John proclaiming uh, a baptism of repentance and forgiveness. And people from all over were flocking, and they were confessing their sins and being baptized by John in the River Jordan um, with confession and forgiveness. But with Jesus' baptism, we don't have any confession. We don't have any repentance by Jesus. He simply comes and is baptized, and the heavens are torn apart, and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. So, interestingly enough, even our natural baptism liturgy that we do, um, we will begin kind of in a John form with ask, calling for confession and forgiveness, in uh, asking, do you renounce the forces of the devil and all that of his empty promises? Do you renounce these things? And then we have you confess your faith um, in the Apostles' Creed. And, um, and that's kind of the John slant to what baptism is about. Um, but then we move into the rite of holy baptism, and that is the Jesus side of baptism, and that it's the gift of the Holy Spirit that descends. What baptism does is it leads one to a whole new way of life. So when we look at the gospel and the baptism of the Lord, we see, you can interestingly note that, you know, J John 4 through 8 is all about John the Baptist. We see John the Baptist. We see, we know what he's eating, what he's wearing, what he's, what he's doing, what he's proclaiming. With Jesus, we don't see any of that. We don't know what he's wearing. Nothing is particularly is pointed out about that. Jesus doesn't say actually anything in his baptism, so there's no words from Jesus. Um, so while we have the full humanness of John, we have the mystery that is Jesus in this narrative. In the baptism of Jesus, um, 
However, we have nature upended. We kind of go back to the beginning of when the word was spoken from he from heaven, uh, let there be light. Um, when the spirit moved over the waters, it did things. And um, in John 9, you, or 10, you see, and just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, the spirit, the heavens were torn apart. So we have the breaking of the cosmos. We have the breaking of that which would separate God from humanity. The heavens are torn apart and God comes down and does a new thing in the Holy Spirit. So out of that rapture comes the Holy Spirit and it forms the, uh, the form of a dove. Now, a dove doesn't simply just alight on his shoulder and is like this little bird, but in Greek, it's uh, ice oton, and which could be said to, it comes into him. It dwells within Jesus. It infuses the Spirit of God in the humanity that is Jesus. So thus becomes a new reality into the world. Um, so anyone that thus, if you were baptized in John's baptism, it would be a ritual of repentance uh, and forgiveness. But to be baptized into Jesus' uh, baptism is to be transformed and to be infused with the Holy Spirit. Um, for the, It includes not just what is seen, but what is unseen. Now, John calls people to faith through uh, and asks them to be baptized, calls them to faith through baptism. So the essential question in this relationship is, if we're, are we in John's baptism and we have to have faith and believe and be baptized and repent and confess, or is faith a byproduct of the baptism with the infusion of the Holy Spirit? So the quintessential question is, are we, it, it's Christ's faith that is given to us in the waters of baptism. Or is it our desire to do the work of repentance and receive faith? Uh, there's a theologian, um, Sherman, Alexander Sherman, who you know wrestled with this problem. And he talked about how either our response to God's call is a very reality of what it, the call to be baptized summons. Faith, in other words, is what baptism imparts to us. Through the Holy Spirit in baptism, we're given the faith of Jesus. So it's a very Lutheran thing, you know, anti-works, that's not about works. We're not saved by, we're saved through faith. Um, we're saved by grace through faith, which is the faith of Jesus. Not our own faith, but that faith which is given to us in the waters of baptism. Now, sometimes the reality of the faith of Jesus isn't as apparent to us. You know, we see these crowds going to be baptized, um, and we think then it's their going, their impetus. When in the Lutheran tradition, naturally, we bring a child, and they receive, they're given these gifts already. Uh, so whereas John would describe a different kind of baptism than Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit that's the central role in this narrative. The Holy Spirit has the action. The Spirit, rather than washing us away, infuses and transforms the person who is Jesus to be uh, the Son of God. Thus, then the voice comes from heaven and says, This, this is my beloved, in whom I'm well pleased. So hence, we practice baptism as Jesus um, in bringing them and that they might be claimed by this community of faith that has that believes in the work of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does. Um, we can get all too caught up in our participation in the work of the church, uh, failing to acknowledge the mystery of how the Holy Spirit enters into us. So, um, surprise, I forgot to silence my phone. The work we do may seem to be the goal rather than uh, what grows out of the gift of holy baptism. So, as we're looking at the baptism of our Lord this Sunday, I want you to think about, is it John's baptism that we're drawn to, of repentance and forgiveness, or is it Jesus' baptism to recognize the infusion of the Holy Spirit, uh, that it descends in our baptism promise and transforms us 
to be the person we are. Hope to see you in church.